All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll be now talking about city and federation, uh, and um, uh, generally about city and federation, as well as more specifically, um, we'd like to share some of the work that we've been doing in the context of a city and federation pilot with um, uh, a bunch of service providers, and uh, in particular in the phase two, the second phase of that pilot project. Uh, I'm Francois Lefaucheur. I work for Cisco in the service provider video technology group. Uh, uh, outside of Cisco, I'm also the co-chair of the um, IETF working group on CDN interconnection, uh, and I'm also the technical leader for the CDN federation pilot. Um, so that's what I had, you know, quite one slide of market context, uh, which is uh, driving uh, this notion of CDN federation. Then we'll go into what it is uh, uh, that we're calling CDN federation, what are the business drivers, uh, then I'll give you an introduction on what is the CDN Federation pilot project, uh, what it's trying to achieve, and then I'll start walking through some of the conclusions and, and um, findings of this pilot project. Um, so let's talk about this context. Um, um, well, you know, good for me. That point has been made very thoroughly before uh, uh, already. Uh, basically, we all know here in this audience that there's a very... Uh, a sharp increase of video traffic. I'll just single out one figure out of these data points that are on that slide. Uh, we expect a quadrupling of, of IP traffic by 2015. Out of that, 90% of traffic will be video. Uh, that means a lot of additional video traffic. And what interests me for this discussion today is the requirement that this video traffic increase places on the infrastructure. So, you know, I think at this stage we can, we can clearly see a requirements for uh, scaling the transport infrastructure, the content delivery infrastructure, and also the requirement for um, enhancing the quality of experience that can be achieved on, on, on these uh, scaled up infrastructure. So that's all I'll say about the, the market, but you can see that these scaling requirements, this need for quality of experience uh, for, for content, is the background on which the CDN Federation concept is coming from. So let's talk about that CDN Federation. So what it is. Uh, here's one definition. Um, we see it as a collection of CDNs which are operated autonomously, right, by different entities, but are interconnected through open interfaces so that collectively they can work as a logical, multi-footprint uh, content delivery infrastructure. Okay, that's what we would refer to as a CDN federation. Uh, so what would be the business drivers? Why would the you know, players into this content ecosystem be interested in that? Um, from a service provider's perspective, right, the you know, most salient and, and well understood is the cost reduction by having a CDN in the service provider network that's interconnected into other CDNs. You can then, in this uh, service provider CDN, populate content of over-the-top uh, uh, providers into your service provider caches. And that obviously means uh, cost reduction, significant cost reduction. Uh, I think that's well understood. Um, then the next motivation is that uh, you can, uh, out of this um, interconnected CDN, derive a new service offering for your partners, for the other operators, for the CDN operators in particular. You can develop a CDN interconnect service that would complement the IP transit and peering services you may have today. There you go. Um, the other opportunity for service providers is that they, you know, by joining the CDN Federation, they now become in a good position to sell internet-wide delivery services, right? Because they, they don't just no longer cover their own little footprint or big footprint, but still their own. By uh, leveraging the other members of the CDN Federation, they cover the collective footprint. So they can go back to a content provider and say, me and my friends in the CDN Federation, uh, which you don't have to know about, by the way, because I deal with that, but with, with the CDN Federation, I can cover the whole internet and give you a, a delivery service with that. The other dimension that's interesting is that such a CDN Federation, by leveraging the collective investment into caches uh, of many service providers, you know, has a, a, um, uh, uh, an opportunity for being of extremely large scale and extremely distributed, okay? And as a result, uh, perhaps of delivering a superior quality of experience to the end users. Uh, and the last opportunity is for the service providers to extend their own 
video services, by you know, some sort of TV everywhere service where their own content can be delivered with good quality through the other CDNs of the CDN Federation. For the content providers and the media companies, uh, what does it make sense? Well, for them, it's an additional delivery uh, channel, delivery vehicle, right? It's one other option they can consider. And it's going to have its own pros and cons and trade-off. And, uh, um, you know, it has a number of attractive uh, potentials. One of them is, again, this, this higher quality of experience because of the scale of sh collective infrastructure across multiple players. Uh, it also reduced the business complexity because with a CDN federation, a content provider would be leveraging many CDNs, but would still only have to interconnect contractually and technically through one or two prime CDNs, right, which deal with the federation. So it simplifies their operation. Uh, and from the consumer viewpoint, you know, hopefully the visible part of the CDN federation is uh, a richer quality of experience. Uh, how would CDN federation be deployed? Well, the two main models we're seeing is, first one, the bilateral model. Uh, pretty straightforward. You have a bunch of CDNs that agree to work together, right? They interconnect on a bilateral one-to-one -one basis, okay? They're CDNs. And then, you know, as you can expect, a content provider um, um, who's contracting delivery service, delivery service from the prime CDN uh, will have his content delivered locally to the on-net users of the prime CDN by the prime CDN and will have its content delivered to other users attached to other CDNs through the other CDNs. Okay. Uh, the other model that we've been studying is the model of a CDN exchange. In that case, the CDN uh, that agree to work together, they interconnect their CDN through a CDN exchange. I know, benefit is obvious. You don't develop 10 interconnections to work with 10 CDNs. You develop one. Okay. You know, that model is known. That's what is done for IP traffic as well. Uh, that CDN exchange would then take on the, the, the multiple roles, billing and, and uh, settlement and request routing, perhaps content distribution. Uh, if it doesn't take on all the roles, you can still have interconnection bilaterally for the subset of the functions not done through the exchange. And then the net result is the same. Content can be delivered through all the CDNs participating in the federation. Uh, there may be some hybrid deployment where a, a, a large CDN would interconnect with another large CDN directly and may interconnect to a, a bunch of small CDNs through a CDN exchange. All of that is possible. Uh, one last word on the deployment is that we expect to not see one big magical CDN federation happen one day. You know, most likely, there will be pockets of CDN federation starting for specific use cases. You know, you may have a national federation in one country, a national federation in another country. You may have a federation for you know, distribution of, of, of software updates across uh, the world. And gradually, this federation, they will get together. And, and from separate islands, they may become gradually a big CDN federation. But it's not going to happen like that all of a sudden. So that's you know, the picture for what is CDN federation, what are the, the rationale behind it. Um, what's the pilot project in there? Um, it's an informal group of service providers which are keen to progress this concept and, and willing to collaborate together and with Cisco uh, to advance that concept. Uh, every participant in the pilot project gets very practical hands-on experience uh, because the technical track is based on just distributed labs in every of these service providers interconnected. Uh, and, you know, we feel it sort of just accelerates the, uh, uh, the industry into this direct direction of CDN federation, and it also helps us accelerate the, the work in the, uh, uh, in the ITF in particular, in the standards in general. Um, it's got both a business track and a technical track because, frankly, you know, we, we still have to um, uh, uh, understand both the business aspects and the technical aspects of, of, of that thing. So we're making a lot of progress. We're still working on it. Uh, it's a long-term project. So uh, it's executed in three phases. Phase one happened last year. Um, we established um, a, a CDN federation, a base CDN federation, um, across all these labs, and we validated the basic use cases and a base set of functionality across the pilot federation. Um, we started phase two at the end of last year, uh, and we're still into it. It's going to finish next month, right? And now we're starting to um, uh, validate enhanced use cases and enhanced capabilities on this pilot federation. Right? We uh, expect there will likely be a third phase starting after this summer. You can see on this uh, uh, document here the, the list of service providers that participated in phase one at the top and in phase two. 
uh, then. Uh, I can also announce that um, uh, uh, CenturyLink uh, in the U.S. has uh, indicated they're willing to participate in the uh, next phase of the pilot as well. So we'll have more, more members uh, in the phase three. So let me talk about the pilot um, uh, results now. So I put that slide to give you a feeling for what was the CDN topology in uh, the first phase of the pilot. So this just illustrates the result of one series of tests. And you can see that we had sort of a, a two measures of, of, of CDNs there. And uh, we validated uh, uh, vi deliv all sorts of deliveries for video on demand. Okay? This slide captures some of the conclusions of the phase one business track. You know, today I want to focus on the phase two results, so I won't go through all these ones, but I le left them here for reference, okay? I think what you'll see if you look at them is that, you know, they sort of all corroborated and confirmed um, the, the maintenance that CDN Federation will basically accelerate, right, the, the growth of the delivery market and of the content services. And we, we thought that was very important to re-emphasize that from the phase one and, and be sure about that you know, uh, across all the participants of the pilot. On the technical side, again, I won't, you know, list all the capabilities that were tested, but the claim really I think we can make is that we validated, we proved in a distributed lab environment that it's possible to establish a base CDN federation across multiple service providers. And in phase one, interestingly enough, we had more than one vendor participating. Um, let me move to phase two. So I'll try to give a little more detail there. Um, that picture, again, I took to illustrate the, the sort of CDN meshing we have. It's the results of one test we did out of the many. Uh, this one was aiming at, at you know, simultaneously validating uh, uh, deliveries all over the place in all sorts of direction at the same time on top of this infrastructure. So, you know, these were every purple arrow is, is an explicit test validating that we delivered content from this CDN through this CDN to that sort of end users. Uh, but, you know, the point here is so that you see the participants and, and get a feeling for the, the sort of meshing that, that was happening. Um, on the business track, what did we look at? Well, uh, um, we looked further into the, the use cases and, you know, we refined the fact that, yes, there is multiple use cases. Uh, good examples would be a domestic in-country CDN federation. Uh, versus international CDN federation. They all have their own you know, value proposition and, and business models uh, uh, associated with them. Uh, it's likely we feel that um, um, the initial deployments would be stimulated by um, in-country CDN federation, mostly because premium videos typically has distribution rights that are localized by country. Uh, there's a, a number of use cases for international right away th such as um, uh, software updates delivery, for example. Um, so. Uh, that's that's the you know the, the discussion we had on use cases. Uh, the next bullet point here is that we can you know, we identified a big opportunity for the CDN federation and service providers in the area of quality of experience. I've, I've touched on that point really. You know, if you picture uh, many service providers uh, investing significantly into cash, very distributed into their network, and these infrastructure being pulled together. Um, that's a very sizable cash infrastructure that can be, you know, considered a, as a collective infrastructure. And be, because it will be very deeply distributed, uh, the quality of experience you can expect from that is, is, is strong, right? And that's an opportunity for the CDN Federation to, to differentiate, to bring value into the content delivery, uh, and for the, for the service providers to derive value out of that. The third bullet is referring to the fact that CDN Federation can also help in handling the explosion of traffic uh, on mobile networks, okay? Because one of the downstream CDNs, one of the delivering CDNs in the picture could be um, an on-net CDN into a mobile network, right? And it would get the content uh, into its cache through the CDN Federation and do all sorts of optimization that it can do because it manages the content now, okay? Um, CDN Exchange, we studied that quite a bit. Um, uh, I guess, you know, to give you a feel, uh, some of the simple conclusion is that we, we expect there will be deployment without a CDN exchange. Uh, we think there may be deployment with a CDN exchange. The CDN exchange function is not a binary atomic thing. There's a whole continuum of function that the exchange may do. It may, you know, do only a subset at the beginning, may do more afterwards. Um, and we also looked at the uh, existing IPX uh, uh, solution that is there today for interconnecting services, in particular uh, 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 mobile roaming services. Uh, that could be an interesting candidate for building a CDN exchange infrastructure. 
And we also study high-level operational blueprint for the CDN Federation, um, you know, identify the roles, responsibilities, identify the steps in uh, uh, service provisioning, in service assurance. In terms of um, uh, roles and responsibilities, um, uh, you know, I won't mention everything, but I guess key to, to the model is that, you know, the content provider obviously continues to own the relationship to the um, end user. The prime CDN has a sales relationship to the content provider, right? Uh, and it's responsible for placing content on their cache to serve the end users that are on net, as well as serve the downstream CDN, the sub-CDNs, right? And the prime CDN is providing the full operational interfaces and support to the content provider. The content provider does not see the sub-CDNs. It's not aware of the sub-CDNs. Sub-CDN, in turn, owns a sales relationship only to the prime CDN, right? Not involved with the end user, not involved with the content provider. And it's responsible for doing the right thing to get the content on the right caches and serving the local users. CDN Exchange, we've talked about it. Um, so on the technical track now, you know, what did we, uh, what did we learn? My, you know, my high-level claim is that in this phase two, um, we've basically proved that we can now build a CDN federation with some enhanced functionality, right? I think there is still uh, additional really advanced functionality we want to work on, and we'll do that in phase three. But already, the set of functionality built in the phase two and proved to, to be deployable is, um, uh, is a very interesting set of features. I think you can start building a service, uh, a viable service with that. Uh, to give you a feeling for the sort of test we, we did and, and, and explicit validation, in addition to video on demand, this time we also validated live services, adaptive streaming in different technologies, Moose, Apple, H, Apple HLS, uh, uh, Zeri. Um, we also looked at time-shifting services, right, because those require different caching optimization, right, because the content is going to be accessed later on, so uh, it's a different uh, uh, caching optimization you want to do compared to pure live services. We uh, validated this notion of in-country CDN federation. Now, that, that's got some special technical requirements because now you need to select a CDN not just based on the country, but based on, you know, which autonomous system uh, um, uh, this end user is actually attached to. We uh, validated uh, content with special delivery requirements, you know, that require manipulation of the URI, perhaps because there was some, you know, session, unique session ID that we put in there and would make uh, naive content, not naive caching not possible, so we, we can deal with that. Um, we looked at uh, validating that we could build a dense meshing across all these CDNs in a scalable way. You know, we defined a provisioning model which is very scalable, right? And uh, we also validated DNS-based operation. We focused before a lot on HTTP-based redirection for video. We also validated DNS, or we are about, actually, I should say, to validate DNS-based operation. Uh, so we can also, through a CDN federation, support delivery of small objects, which have different performance uh, requirements. Um, and we uh, are also about to validate um, a, a requirement that's a, a little more advanced here, which is to support very fine-grained distribution policies across a CDN federation, and that's through a distributed form of URI signing across all the CDNs. Uh, we also did some basic validation. We didn't do very exhaustive performance validation, but we did some basic performance validation of the gains we can achieve through a CDN federation. So that's, you know, a, an overview of um, uh, the work we've been doing in the phase two. What are the next steps? Well, we want to uh, conclude phase two um, uh, by the end of next month. There's a few more enhanced validation functionality that will validate IPv6 access to the end users, aggregated logs for adaptive streaming, which you know tend to generate a lot of log entries on a per segment basis. Uh, and we want to feed this work into the ITF work, right? So you know multiple of us are involved in the pilot and involved in the ITF work, and we're feeding that work there, right? The pilot is not just to build their own little private. Uh, um, um, expert expertise, it's there to accelerate uh, the development of the standards. Then we'll move into a phase three, I've mentioned that. Uh, example of things we'll look into is integration of fixed mobile CDN, uh, cross CDN analytics will be an important part we expect. Scaling, we'll start studying, and uh, we'll have more uh, types of players in the ecosystem, such as content providers. I think now the Federation pilot is ready to, to have sufficient value for content providers. We expect they would come. We may do some uh, trial of a uh, delivery of real content. Uh, so that brings me to my, my conclusion. I think what, what do we conclude uh, uh, out of that? 
we see that CDN federation is gaining momentum, right, as a way for service providers to um, uh, address the conundrum, which is reduce cost and at the same time generate new uh, incremental uh, revenue. Um, there's an opportunity in the CDN federation for the service providers to, to deliver richer content <coughs> service than what may be available otherwise, right? And that matches what end users expect and therefore what content providers would like to see. Um, you know, you've, you've figured that out. There's a bunch of service providers that are keen to make that happen and work and collaborate to make that happen. Um, we're feeding the learnings of this work into the standardization process and I want to emphasize, you know, emphasize that again. You know, it's going to be hard enough to make CDN Federation happen and be successful with a single open solution. You know, if we go for fractured proprietary solution, <coughs> my personal belief is it's just not going to happen. So we feel extremely strongly that openness is essential. We have to work together on that one and, and make it an open standard solution. Thank you very much. <coughs>